Hello. 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 How do we just say hello? Hello. Okay. I don't like doing this. I hate doing this. Here we go. I can do this. I hate doing this. Hey everyone, I'm Annie. Um, this is my first actual tutorial that I'm going to be doing. Please excuse me if I'm awkward or nervous or I talk too much. I don't like talking to the camera usually, but a lot of you ask me about the types of paint I use, how I mix, how much water I put, what I put into my water, if I use silicone oil, if I use alcohol, all these different things. So um, I've found it pretty easy the way I do things to get the cells and the, I guess, you know, the, the look that I want. So I kind of wanted to share some of the things that I use, my torch, what kind of torch I use, um, give you some hints on certain items they should get at the dollar store because the dollar store, the 99 cent store, is your second happy art store. Um, you can't buy paint and stuff there obviously, but you can buy your mixing sticks, your cups, your plates, your you can buy so much stuff there that saves you so much time. Um, so I'm gonna share kind of those things with you too. Um, again, I hope I'm not awkward. I'm so nervous right now. So I'm just gonna get into it. I'm gonna do the paint at the end because once I show you the different paints that I use and the consistency of them, um, I'm going to actually mix them to show you how much water you should add to different types of paints and then I'm actually going to do a pouring video. So I'm going to show you guys how to make it, how I've actually poured them into the cup together and then have it poured onto a canvas. So um, over here I have like a little canvas board as you can see it's very, um, you know, moose bendy. Um, I don't like using these for my pouring just because the paints have a lot of, it's a lot of liquid as it is, and then when you add water to it, it soaks it in and it actually starts to like kind of bend and bow like that, and it just, it, it loses it, and if you're, when you're pouring, your canvas has to be super, super flat and straight, so your best friend when you're pouring is this little guy right here. Um, invest in one, go to Home Depot, this is my dad's, I stole my dad's one, so I don't know how much these things cost, but you need one. So you literally, you get it, just put it down on your surface and just make sure that a little air bubble stays in the middle of where it's supposed to be. Because if your table is off just by a teeny tiny bit, you put it down, you don't see it moving because it's so slow. But if you go and work on something or leave it or whatnot, you're gonna come back and that's it's completely dripping off of your canvas. It's gonna make an absolute mess, first of all. Second of all, all your cells that you make all the beautiful cells are gonna start running, so you're gonna get like a runny look. So um, invest in one of these, make sure that your surface is just completely um, straight. Check it, you know, on all different sides. Sometimes like on one side, it might not be as leveled as somewhere else. So just get your table very leveled, okay? So this is the first thing that I want you to get. Okay guys, so when you're pouring, one of the most important tools that you can get, I think, is this fun little torch. So. Um, this is the only one I've owned, but I know that there is a ton of type of torches. It doesn't matter which one it is. I like the torch that it, there's just the torch, just the fire, and it's not like a heat gun and it doesn't blow air. Because when you're pouring, you have so much liquid. If, you, if your gun is shooting air out, it might move around your paint if you get too close, and we don't want that. So this one is called Burnzomatic. So this is it right over here. And um, so this is a butane gun. So this is how you fill it. This is the one that I got. I got both of these from Home Depot. I believe this was like $24 and I think this was maybe like six or eight. Don't quote me on this one, I don't remember. The thing that I love about this is that um, most torches, if it's um, a propane one I think it's called, the tank has to stay in it. And those tanks are usually like really big, right? And it's heavy. and we don't want to do that. So this is super easy. You take the cap off and there's this little head part of it. And on the bottom of this, there's a little 
nail looking, I don't know, it's like a little opening, and this fits right into it. So what you do is you hold this upside down, this is what the Home Depot guy told me, you have to hold it upside down, I don't know why, but you got to, and you bring this down and you put it in, and you just press it. So it fills this with the butane and the way you know that you need to stop is that while I was filling it that way it just it just kind of was like a little bit of smoke or air was coming out at the end a liquid started coming out so once that happens you remove the tank from it and whatever was outside dries just like that super super quick then you're set so this is super easy to use again I love this it's lightweight it's I mean I'm five foot one I'm small I have tiny hands fits right into my hand it's great and it has this protective look a little clicky thing so you just bring it down like that and you literally just press sometimes it takes a second for the butane to like work in there we go see so that's it that's all you do um so a little trick on how you use it when you pour you don't just go like this right on top of it. You don't want to get super close. I find that that, what it does, it gives too much heat and it kind of boils the paint wherever it is. And it's kind of fine. Like it bubbles and makes this weird burn skin on top. So click it down, get the fire down. And then I like to hold it sideways and kind of gently, I don't know, blaze it, go over it. I don't know what it's called. But um, why do we use this? So... Um, when you mix your paint, you're naturally adding air into the water and the paint when you're mixing it. So when you pour it, um, you get small bubbles and those bubbles actually stay there until it dries and when they pop, it leaves a little holes in your painting. So we don't want that. We want a really nice smooth finish. So what you do is with this torch, when you torch it, it heats the bubbles and the bubbles just pop automatically and because the paint is so wet and so liquidy and so fluid, it just completely covers it up so you don't see it. So what it does, it takes out all of those air bubbles out of your paint. Also, in certain areas where cells aren't developing, it kind of helps it, but it's not the same. It's not like these those big beautiful cells that we get. It's actually like really tiny small ones, which really adds to the painting. So um, when you're using it, play with it a little bit in areas where you don't see cells, or even when you see the cells, kind of go over it a little bit and you'll see that it actually gives a different kind of texture and it's really pretty so try it out play with it it's all a learning experience it doesn't happen right away um it took me a lot of turn like testing and trial and error for me to kind of understand all this so definitely invest in one of these is 25 dollars. you just need to get this one time and then i mean i've been using this first tank that i got for like a month and a half and i fill it almost every time i pour and it's still like really full so it's a really good investment one of the best things that you can get when you're pouring, especially also if you're pouring resin. Um, when you when you turn, you get a lot of air bubbles, and when you pour your resin, you want it absolutely clean and perfect, like clear, glossy. You need this gun to get all those air bubbles out of your resin, so make sure you get this one. So some of you have seen, um, I believe, my paintings where I use a lot of ink. Um, I didn't learn this from anybody, and I learned the hard way that it's really not easy to make a full painting of just ink by itself like puddles of it I use a lot of ink um, but I'm going to share my favorite brands with you so I have this one brand it's called um, Dr. Martin's Bombay so it's this one right over here I've had these inks for I had it for the longest time I bought them and I never used them they were just sitting in my drawer they stayed perfectly, they didn't dry up. The only thing was it was a little hard to open at first, but the ink was absolutely, it was just like I bought it yesterday. So I love, love, love this brand. Um, second brand that I absolutely love that I found was the Liquitex ink. So you, I get these from, um, the Liquitex ink, I get it from Michaels. I love them. They're about $6 per one, so it's pretty expensive. So um, if you're using ink, just, you know, be mindful how you're using it, know what you're going to do before you're going to use it because it's an expensive medium. I love it because, especially this one, it's called Iris Iridescent Bright Gold. It's a gold ink. I love everything gold. So this is my favorite. Um, when I use ink and I mix it, um, they blend. 
or they sit on top of each other. Um, and what I do is I get rubbing alcohol. So I got this again from the dollar store. This is a 50% um, 50 alcohol. It's best if you can find a higher one. So if you can get a 70 or a 90, but you might have to order it on Amazon. I have not, I haven't been able to find it in the stores. No matter, I mean, I, here and there I look. It's not really a big deal if you just use the 50. I use the 50, I've been using the 50. Um, but if you get the higher alcohol percentage, then I, uh, what happens is your ink will separate more. So when I, I will do, I will bring the camera closer and show you guys right now. Um, but when you add your two inks together and you spray it, it kind of makes them move in a certain way. So um, alcohol, I, get, I got one of these bottles at like an art store. Um, it's like two, three bucks. Again, it's an investment. If you're gonna keep using it with alcohol, it doesn't go bad, you don't have to buy a new one. Just refill it. Um, another thing that sometimes I do is when I finish an ink bottle, I wash it out really well and just the empty bottle is clear and I add alcohol into it. So let's say I want to add alcohol into my pouring. Um, it makes it kind of easier because I kind of see how much is going in there and it's smaller amounts as opposed to me dumping it with the actual bottle. Um, so if you add, I've learned, if you add alcohol to your paint, your cells pop out like crazy, but they keep opening and they get bigger and bigger and bigger and then they all kind of blend together. So if you want to get kind of like a marble look, I say add alcohol to your, um, to your pouring paint for sure with the water. Put a little bit, opens a little, you put a lot, it's going to open up a lot. Um, so if you want a marble look, you put this, but if you want to get just the cells and you want the cells to sit next to each other and have a bunch of them, do not use alcohol. I made that mis mistake on a really big painting. It still turned out beautiful, but it turned into a, like a marble painting as opposed to a cell painting. So that's how I use my alcohol or why I use my alcohol in my videos. So, so let me tell you guys certain things that I get from the dollar store, the 99 cent store. I bought these wooden sticks. They were a pack of maybe like a hundred like this for a dollar. It's lasted me months. It's the best thing. I don't have to use my paintbrushes. I just mix them and I'm done with them. Just toss them. You get a hundred, I think for a dollar or something like that. So these are incredible. Get these from the dollar store. I get these cups. They're like the red cups, but they're right. And you can kind of like see through them. So I kind of, I like these more just because I could see how much I'm pouring or how much is in there as opposed to just guessing from the top. You get like 18 of them for a dollar. Incredible. Do this. Um, also like paper plates, if you want to use those for, um, you know, when you're regularly painting, you can't use it for pouring. Again, you get like 25 of them for a dollar from the dollar store. It's the best thing. Paint, do whatever you need to do. Take it all, toss it in the trash. You're set. Done. So those are some of the things that I um, get from the dollar store. All right. What do I add to my water? For pouring. Um, everybody always asks me, what's in your water? How do you get your cells? I have no idea. It just, it happens. I don't know what it is. I have not been doing this for long. Um, I know that alcohol is not good for cells. I found that adding dish soap, I'm sorry, I have like a huge dish soap. I mean, regular palm olive dish soap, what you wash your dishes with. Um, very just a couple little drops. I'm going to show you how how much. So I usually have like my water bottle where I use to add water to my paints and such. But then I mix a little bit of the soap water by itself. Um, so let me show you. So I literally I just let's add the water. Um, so if you want to just use the soap water to add to your paints for um, the pouring, you can totally do that. I mix sometimes one color, sometimes I'll put a little bit more of the soap water and um, less regular water. Some of, the water. some of the paints I'll just put only water. I think it changes the textures of the paints. So if you're using like three or four paints for a pouring project, it'll change them kind of. So it just gives it more character. One color will open more maybe, the other might not. I have no idea. 
I'm assuming these things. Um, because I've done them before with only water and no soap and it works just fine. I think the trick is getting enough water in your paint and it's the movement that you do. It's pouring it and moving the paint around really well. That way when it moves, I think it separates the water and the paint and that's what makes the cells. So um, let me put the soap in. So this is ridiculously big. Um, I couldn't find my smaller soap thingy. So and then like, let's say a whole bottle of water. That's it. See how much I put? Super tiny amount. I mean, it's really, really small. It's just supposed to be diluted dish soap water, right? Ooh, that was a smart. Make sure that you close your bottle really well before you shake your water. Um, don't worry about the bubbles. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really end up in your paint. I've never had bubbles in my paint before. So don't worry about that. Um, but again, just literally, I put two little drops in here, a little drop, and that's all you needed. Um, I don't know what why it works. I think I, somehow it just separates the paint from the water somehow, and it makes the cell. So that's that. What else? Let me talk to you guys about my canvases. People ask me about my canvases all the time. I already said that these boards, I don't like them very much. There's this one board. Sorry, hold on. Okay. So there are these certain other boards. This one, let me see, what is it called? This is a Canson, um, Canson brand, right? Um, it's, it's kind of, it's soft. I think this is more for light coloring with less water. Um, there are these other boards that are a lot thicker. You can see that the thickness of it kind of and it doesn't bend very much. Um, my favorite brand of all time, Artist Loft. They're not expensive. Their products are incredible, really, really great quality. Um, but again, I've done pouring with these little boards, and again, I find that they bow a little bit, they bend. So I don't like them too much for, for pouring, but I still think you can use them. Um, if you're, I use a lot of product, I pour too much, and I actually let the, almost all the paint sit on top. Um, so I think for me, these boards can't take all that liquid. But if you're going to pour and move your canvas around like this so much that a lot of the paint is going to fall off and you have a light coat of paint. I think these will work. They're great. They're thin. You can frame them easily. Um, get cool pins and like pin them up on a wall somewhere. So if you want to use these, it's great. But again, so Artist Loft. So what I love are the Artist Loft stretch canvases. This is an open one. So this is a 16 by 20. It's wonderful. It's great. Um, the smaller canvases, they don't have like a middle bar right over here. Um, so sometimes if you pour too much liquid, what happens is it sits in the middle kind of and it kind of goes in a little. So it kind of goes to the middle. Um, but I don't mind that. Mind that. I kind of like it because I like to do... Sorry, I keep going off camera. I like doing these kinds of paintings where, you know, I pour in the middle and I kind of turn and I kind of like I'm sitting and I kind of like the outside being a little different. Um, so I mean, kind of see what you want to do. The bigger, the bigger artist loft cam stretch canvases, or I think all of them, all brands or whatnot, they have kind of like the middle areas. They have like a big wood piece too. Um, canvas still sits a little bit further off, so it still kind of bows in. So sometimes what you could do is get a cardboard piece um, that fits inside here and kind of to help it to help it hold it up. Um, so if I'm going to use, I usually do that on like a lot bigger canvases. So if I'm going to use a really big canvas like this, you know, really big. I'll try to put a canvas that sticks under these wood areas right here. It'll go in. Um, I'll put, sorry, cardboard. And it helps keep the, the material canvas part up. So that's something else you could do. So that's another trick. Okay, here we go. So these are some of my favorite brands. Um, I'm gonna, again, show you the consistency of them and how to mix water and how much water with different consistencies, but um, there's a couple different, where is that? 
be good. Okay. So there's a couple different brands that I love. Again, my ultimate favorite brand is Artisoft. So the ones that come in these packaging, it's just called Artist Loft Acrylic. They're very thick, okay? The, the, one that, the ones that come in these tube types right over here, again, Artist Loft, they, again, are thick, but not as thick. I feel like the, the ones in these packaging are a lot thicker. Artist Loft has this one um, line, I guess. It's called Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. These are just regular acrylic. These are flow acrylic. These are a lot more liquidy, right? So here's the kind of the bottle. Um, I've seen a lot of videos where um, artists that pour, they love using this one. Uh, I use it. It does work. I just, I guess I don't use it as much. I don't know. I have, I do sometimes, I guess. I don't know. Um, it works well. I've used this red color before and it turned out beautifully. Um, sometimes what I do is when I mix my colors too, I get some ink and I'll drop it in just to change the color to the color I want to so I don't have to mix too much paint together. So if you want to do that, you can do that as well. Don't be scared to add ink to your paint. So that's that. Um, when I use metallic colors, I love, love, love deco art, okay? So these are two of my favorite colors. This is called Worn, Worn Penny and Splendid Gold. So this is what the bottles look like. And this is just a bigger bottle. They have these small ones too. I hope you can see that. These are amazing. So I love their metallics. They sell so well. They sell so well, that was funny. Um, they make sales very, very well, okay? so. If you want metallics, deco art is great. They're not very expensive. I, I believe these are like $1.80. I think this was like seven something, seven ninety nine dollars maybe. Um, they're not too bad. They work really, really well. So metallics, I like these. When you're pouring metallics though, you have to be very careful. Um, I, I don't know what it is, a shimmer in them or whatever. It kind of will mix to the other colors. So the other colors somehow kind of get like that shimmery tone a little bit, but they don't really change color. I don't know how to explain it, but the shimmer kind of goes all over. So if you're gonna do a pour and you're using all metallics, which I've done before, that painting is gonna be super shiny. So be careful how much you use. Kind of, you wanna balance out things. So don't use too much white, don't use too much black because it's gonna completely overpower the rest. Of you need kind of a good happy medium. So if you're using metallics, again, these deco art paints are very, very great. Um, I generally just like acrylics that are a little bit thicker. Um, I recently found this at um, this art store in downtown Los Angeles. It's called Raw Materials, the store. It's incredible. If you guys ever are in that area, definitely go pay a visit. It's a small little um, art store. It's my favorite. So this brand is called Art Alternatives Economy Acrylic titanium white. It's just a thick white acrylic. Um, I find it was $15. You can't go wrong with it. It works well. I mean, these do too. These are, I've had these, I've had this forever. This is such an old bottle, but um, Blick Acrylic, again, it's a smaller art store, but they have them all over LA. I'm sure they have them in other places too. Um, it's a thicker brand. It works well too. So um, I just, I just say as long as it's not like a super cheap brand of paint, then your cells will work. There's this one brand which I'm not talking shit about because I love, because I do wine and paint classes. I teach wine and paint classes in LA and this is my favorite brand of all time for that. It's called Craft Smart. So Craft Smart is a cheaper brand. Um, the paint is very, very liquid and I believe this is maybe like $3 for this big bottle. Again, it's not, it's not very much more expensive than this one, but with this paint, I find, I don't know if I showed you guys, but yeah, here. So Craft Smart. When this paint, when you pour it thick, because I've always painted with thicker paint. I don't know why. Sorry, not thicker paint, but I use a lot of material. So when I'm painting, I put a thick amount of material or my paint. So when this dries, while it's drying, it cracks. Um, I'm not sure what it is. I've used another, I forget what it is, another brand again that's very similar to this one. 
while it's drawing it cracks but if you're going to be using paint and you're going to like just paint a background or you're painting flat um, and you're not going to be putting a thick amount of it this is a perfect paint to use i have drawers full of it i teach all my classes with it i love it it dries quicker so again it's very thin um so it works really well but i don't find it that it works good for pouring because if it's going to be thick i find that it cracks again and Sometimes it's cool. I think it's a cool effect. I have paintings that, you know, have a bunch of the cracks because of it on it. It's cool. If you want that look, great. But if you want a very smooth finish, um, this isn't, I don't find that this paint works very well. So that's that. All right, guys. So what I want to do is I want to show you kind of the consistency of these brands. Okay. So let's do this one first. So this is this brand right over here, the Artist Loft, the Flow Acrylic. Again, love this brand, it's really great. A lot of people use this for making cells and it works really, really great. So Artist Loft Acrylic Flow. So that's that, you still have that moved around. Um, some of them, again, are a lot more liquid than the other. I think it just depends on the color and the pigments that they use. So this is a white. So again, it's pretty, I mean, it's not very liquidy, but it's definitely on the thinner side of the paint. So if you're going to use now this one, right, the Artist Loft, it's just a regular acrylic. Okay, so... Um, these ones, I believe, are $15. These, I think, are $9. So, let's see this one. So, you'll see that this one, it's definitely thicker. And you'll see now when I move it around, you'll see that's a lot thicker. This right over here, my, one of my favorite colors from them. It's really, really cool. Again, Artist Loft. Just the acrylic. These are about, I want to say these are $3.99. You can always find them on sale at uh, Michael's. Just look at their coupons all the time and you see that they have them a lot cheaper. So this brand, again, it's that. I want to show you the Artist Loft. So, I mean the, oh, sorry. I mean, I want to show you the Craft Smart. So this one right over here. You'll see that, just even the sound of it. You see how liquid that is? It's a very, very loose paint. Also, this one, once you open it, they kind of lump up a little bit. It's kind of weird. Like, it'll get, like, these chunks in it. So, they're not very fun. So, when you get those and you open them, they don't have, a like, a very long shelf life, I believe. So, now I'm going to show this one right over here. This is also a loose one. But I feel like these just work better for some reason. I have no idea why. So that's that. So I'm going to show you this one now. I really like this. I bought the white and the black one of this and I feel like they just, I don't know, they work really well. I was really surprised. It's only, they're only $15 a gallon. So if you go to an art store, see these are pretty thick, which I love, which is fine because you, you use less paint and you just water it down for what you need for the pouring. All right, so these are these. Um, okay. So I just kind of want to show you guys like the thickness of them. See this one? This is way thicker. You can see that it like sticks. This is a lot thicker of a paint. So here, these are a little smoother. This one is just really, really liquidy, very liquidy. This is the same. These kind of have the same consistency.
This one's kind of like in the middle, but it doesn't flow as easily. So it seems like it's very liquidy, but it's not, or very soft. Um, it just, it, it, does, it doesn't flow. You have to add a good amount of water to those. So what happens is with these two right over here, you don't have to add as much water as let's say this one right over here. These two, you don't add as much water as any of them because they're already so liquidy and they're so fluid that you don't want them to be super, super flowy. And this one, again, it's kind of like this one where you, you're gonna have to add a good amount of water to it. So the trick is no matter which brand you use, you can mix and match when you're doing your pouring. The trick is that at the end, after you mix all the paints before you pour, they have to be the same consistency at the end. So if you use this and this, add less water to this, more water to this, but at the end they have to be the same. That's the trick. Because if they're not the same, what's gonna happen is that they are going to blend into each other as opposed to sit around each other. And we want them to sit around each other and not blend because then they're just gonna mix. And that's not what we're trying to achieve. So I hope this helped. All right, so I am going to do six colors. I'm gonna try to use a little bit of all the colors I kind of showed, one of each brand, so that you can kind of see the difference in the consistency and how I'm gonna mix them. So I think I'm gonna use six colors. I usually, I like my colors darker, so it's kind of hard for me to stay to like a light blue or a light pink and things like that. So I'm going to try to keep it on that side and kind of go out of my comfort zone because all of this is very outside my comfort zone. Um, very nervous being talking in front of the camera. So, all right, everybody. So we have our six colors here. Um, you can't see them, but I'm going to hold each one separately so you can. Okay. So let's start with this one. So this is my black color right over here. My black, which was my artist loft, sorry, that's upside down. That's my artist loft brand. Okay, just, just a straight acrylic, which is a thicker. So I'm gonna take my water right over here. This water is the one that I mixed with soap dish, dish soap, whichever. <laughs> so add a little bit at a time. When you're mixing paint, it doesn't like, I hope you can see that. If you add too much water, it's very difficult for it to mix. And sometimes you have to mix it a lot. It takes time, but after a while you'll realize that it mixed really well, which this is not right now. So let's add a little bit more water. Sometimes it stays chunky and you have to really mix that. So if you have to spend time doing that with some of the thicker paints, you just have to. So um, again, the thinner paints, you don't have to struggle with them as much, but I just wanna show you guys the difference in what the paints look like, okay? So if you can see how liquidy that is, let's see. So that's not bad, but when you pour it onto the canvas, you're going to realize that it's not moving enough. So it doesn't just have to be um, like loose. It literally has to flow well. So it has to be a very nice loose. Not too watery though. If it's very, very watery, again, like I said before, it's going to mix with other colors and you don't want that. All right. So see, I don't know if you could see that. I hope you could see that. So let's do that. So next, let's do our pink color. So this pink again is this color right over here. This is a little bit softer, so I think this will give us a bit of an easier time. And also guys, add your water little by little, not just to mix your paint easier, but because if you put too much water, you're gonna have to put, um, oh, these are mixing kind of chunky. Um, you're going to have to add more paint because if it's too liquidy, it's not going to work that way. So make sure little by little, you can always add more, but if you add too much, you can't take it out. So see how thick it is still? So we're going to add more. It's 
to mix that really, really well. So let's see that. See now that might be a little too liquidy. It's okay. Again, you have to learn with colors. I feel like the colors have their own kind of character. So you just, you learn. Okay, that's perfect. So if you could see it, not too watery, but it's totally moving. Mix that really, really well. Okay, so this is my red one. And I added a little bit of the magenta ink to it because I just wanted a little different tone. Not so, I didn't want it super, super bright red. So I'm just mixing that first a little bit. It's not making a huge difference, but I just wanted it a little bit off of that red color. Let's add a little bit of that. So as you can see, at first it's like clunky and it's weird, but don't worry. Just keep mixing, keep mixing, turn it the other way. So this was the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. So this brand really, really works well for yourselves if you want to be pouring. It's a good consistency. It's pretty cheap for the price that you get. I think it was like $9, so let's see that. That, it's still a little bit thick. Let's add a little bit more water. Sorry if this isn't like perfect, this view, but best I could do. I can't see what the camera is showing. much water so I'm just gonna add a drop more of paint I do this all the time and I end up with so much paint at the end but it's just again it's a learning process Easy that's moving, that's how we want it to be. Alright, this is one of my favorite gold colors right over here. So for this one, I'm gonna add a little bit of that water, the soap water. I'm gonna add a little bit of just regular water. So these always seem really loose in the beginning. But they thicken up once you mix them really well. So all those air bubbles will kind of like settle by the time you mix all your paint. And then when you pour them into each other, again, it settles and 
That's what we use the air gun for, or the heat gun. Once we pour it and those bubbles are still there, it'll take it right out. So don't worry about those. Okay, so here's your white. So a little bit of that. I'm gonna for this one. I'm gonna add more of just the regular water. Oops, it's probably too much, but. I'll add more paint if we need. This also gives you a real nice arm workout, by the way. <laughs> All right, so nice and fluid, but not super watery. So if you could see that. Okay, so here I'm making my own turquoise color. So if, again, if you feel like you want to Mix your colors, do that. I think it's awesome, it's fun. It's part of the creative process, you know? So make your own colors. Once you mix it up, you can see the consistency of it. And once you do that, then you can determine how much water you're gonna get. So this is really thick. So we're gonna add a good amount of water to that one. But again, little by little. So you don't want to keep adding paint to it. All right. So see, we added some water, but it's not flowing. That's way too thick of a paint. It seems like it'll flow, but it's not. It's too, it's still too thick. Um, again, it's trial and error. You'll realize sometimes I make mistakes too, and I'm, I, I, I still sometimes feel like, okay, yeah, that's enough. I don't want it too liquidy. I don't want to, you know, dilute it too much. And then I pour it, and it just doesn't work. It doesn't flow. It still ends up pretty. It does still does things, but not the way I want it to. So let's see. Yeah, see, still. Still pretty, pretty thick. Oh, still thick. It's a little too much. See now, you can see that it's pretty liquidy. It's moving really well. All right, so now we have all our six colors ready. Okay, so now you have all your colors mixed and ready. And um, there are a few ways you could pour. There are people when they pour, they make what's called like a target. So you'll pour one color, you'll put it down, you get another color, you'll pour it in the middle of it, you'll get another color in the middle of that, and you just keep pouring, and it keeps like turning into this target, and they'll do that. And, different spots and then what they'll do is they'll get their canvas and they'll turn it all over and make sure the paint goes all over the place. Um, it gives you kind of like this cool streaky look and it starts to sell after it settles. So you can do that or what I like to do is I get a 
separate cup and I'll pour a little bit of each color in a row and then I'll go again and I'll go again and the colors that I want to be more prominent on my painting I'll put more of. The ones that I don't want to take over too much I'll put less of. Um, that's how I like to pour so that's how I'm going to show you how to pour today. I don't have a lot of experience pouring the other way. This is how I've been doing it. Um, so this is what I'm going to do and maybe next time I'll learn with you guys and I'll pour that way and see what we get. So I'm going to bring all my paints here. So I'm going to try to do something fun. So I took the 16 by 20 and I pre-painted it. It's still a little wet, so that's totally fine. So if you want to paint your background, you don't have to wait for it to dry. Really, it's okay. Um, I feel like it might even like help the paint spread. Whatever, I don't know. Um, I don't think it makes a difference, so people ask me that too. Doesn't matter. Do what you want to do. Um, you learn every time it does something different, so it's all good. So I'm going to pour my paint first into the cup, and then when I actually pour it on the canvas, I'm going to bring the camera closer so you guys can see that, because I know a lot of you guys love that, and you guys ask me that all the time. So our paints are mixed, and you'll notice now that the bubbles are a lot less in there, but what you do is you're gonna, you need to mix them again before you pour them into this cup, because again, the water and the paint separate, that's how we get the cells. So while it's sitting, it does that. So mix your paint and pour a little bit. And sometimes while you're pouring this way, you'll you'll realize that the paint is thick. If you realize it, stop right away, add a little bit of water to your paint, mix it up and just continue. That little bit that you poured isn't gonna hurt it, but if you feel like it's too thick, add more. Or sometimes you feel like it's clunky, makes it more, it's all good. So I hope you could see kind of the consistency of how this is pouring. That's how it needs to be. Liquidy enough, but not water, not very watery. It just needs to be able to run. As you're pouring it, if you look in your cup, you'll see it selling and dividing and doing really cool things. That's how you know that it's gonna, it's gonna work. But again, it's all trial and error, and sometimes I'll pour it and nothing happens. So hopefully this works, but we'll see. I never know what's gonna come out of this. crazy with this right now. So much color. Okay. I would suggest before pouring to either pour in a tub like I usually do or put um, some kind of sheet. Again, dollar store, 99 cent store, those um, plastic covers for those tables are fantastic. Buy a couple of them, double them up, put them on. It'll save you a lot of mess. So when I pour this, I'm going to try to not get um, a lot of it off the canvas. I'm going to try to keep it on. So hopefully I don't make a huge mess, but I'm going to bring the camera forward. All right, guys, here we go. Let's see how this goes. Hopefully it goes well. All right. Do a little happy dance. I'm nervous. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay. 
So I like to let it sit for a second to see what's happening. Do you see all the little bubbles opening up already? I like to let it sit, kind of see where the colors are going. Okay. So let's do a little, little twirl. Try to keep all the paint on here just for, oh, not going to happen. That's okay. Oh, look at that. You guys see that opening up? Okay. okay. I think I'm gonna leave this. I like it. You already see the cells kind of forming in certain places. I probably didn't move it enough, but you see all this happening right here. And it, sometimes it takes time, so don't be afraid to just like let it be a little bit. But I'm going to show you now. Ooh, look at that. What's happening? It's going to be this one's going to be pretty. Look how colorful. Okay, so My handy dandy torch, I love this torch. It's the best thing you could do for yourself, buy one. Okay, so take your torch. Look at that, see that? It helps it develop kind of in certain areas. But the bubbles are smaller, the cells are smaller, so don't overdo it and let it actually like work. Um, I like to sometimes also take it and just shake it a little bit, kind of help it kind of develop. And sometimes it takes time, you'll come back sometimes like 10 minutes from now and it's going to just like be completely different. So I'm going to let this keep going, get all that here, oh, I love that. So I'm going to try, I really want this to, yeah, see? What it's doing. Okay. Don't overdo it in one area because um, it'll burn. It starts. Oh my goodness, you guys! Look at those colors. Oh moly! See? But if you overdo it in one area, it's going to. Um, it'll burn the the paint. It heats it too much and it like boils it. So, don't want that happening. See here, see all those air bubbles? If you just, if you lightly do this, all those air bubbles get out of there. So you don't want those staying there because when they do, again, it leaves all those little holes in your painting. See, when the cells open up, that's when all those other colors come out from the bottom. And I like to kind of not torch all the areas, because I like kind of to leave certain areas more solid if they're just staying that way. It just kind of gives like a difference. 